Spargo made history at Collision 2022, claiming his first Open Major Tournament victory. Not only did Spargo follow through on his Summit 4 win by taking another set over MKLeo, he did it in spectacular fashion, becoming just the fifth player ever to reverse 3-0 Ultimate's greatest player. How did he do it? Well, today, we'll take you inside the comeback and dive into the numbers behind Spargo's legend-slaying performance. With his win at Summit 4, Spargo became just the ninth player to take multiple major sets off of MKLeo. Winner's finals at the subsequent week's Collision 2022 was Leo's chance to get revenge. Last time he lost at Summit, he swiftly regained his throne, taking out Tweak in consecutive sets at the next major, Riptide. In fact, of those nine players to take sets from MKLeo multiple times, only one ever took him out at consecutive tournaments, Samsora at Super SmashCon 2019 and Shine 2019. Collision was the first major open bracket of the 2022 PGRU season, a perfect opportunity for Leo to prove in front of everybody that he was still number one. As strong as Spargo had been playing, history tells us the deck was stacked against him. The first two games didn't suggest anything to the contrary. Spargo managed to take a brief lead on the second stock, but Leo calmly walled him out, evened things up, and claimed game one. Game two also starts out even. Leo takes the first stock, but at an unhealthy percent, Spargo looks ready to pounce. Instead, disaster strikes. It's your time to respond. What's he got, Max? Leo saying, I have heard the streets talk. Oh, God! I heard people saying Limit. Spargo yeah, might to... be the new guy. Let me remind nah, you, I am nah, still nah, the nah. guy. One of the scariest things about MK Leo is that even though he is quite capable of explosive KOs like the one we just saw, they are by no means a regular part of his game plan. Consider Leo's legendary losers run at Frostbite 2020, where he won 11 sets in what may go down as Ultimate's greatest losers run ever, including wins over Tweak, Samsora, Zachre, Nairo, Meister, and more. Of the 107 stocks he took in that losers run, just four came from from sub 30% openings. Even these plays are mostly multi layered edge guards with a couple of reads. In game two against Spargo, Leo found one big whiff punish, caught Lazy Blade Beam off stage, and that was it. One of the fastest stocks you'll ever see him take. Spargo would valiantly bring it back to last stock, but Leo would close out game two without serious difficulty. It would be easy to give up in Spargo's situation. Winning three out of five against Leo is difficult enough, but three out of three? It's an impressive enough stat that Leo had only been reversed 3 0 four times at major events prior to collision. 2022, and two of them were in Summit Pools, which Leo and his opponents have suggested are not taken quite as seriously as the main bracket. As good as it is to beat Leo, I want it in, like, a tournament bracket, because me and him played last Summit, and mm -hmm. we agreed on this. Like, when we play here, it's kind of, like, casual until the actual bracket. I got you. Like, we don't take pools too seriously when we fight each other. Mm -hmm. So, like, it was, like, a respectable match, you know? But it is arguably more impressive that in 145 best-of-five sets in the first two PGRU seasons, plus Genesis 7 and Frostbite 2020, MKLeo only lost four sets by a 3-0 game count. In reverse chronological order, those were against Kurma at Frostbite 2020, Mars at Genesis 7, Gluttony at Ultimate Fighting Arena 2019, where Leo would immediately 3-0 him back in the Grand Finals reset, and Tweak at Frostbite 2019. Regardless of when in the set you do it, taking three consecutive games from MKLeo is just about the most difficult task in Smash Bros. But let's zoom out and take a look at those first two games. Outside of Leo's one big explosive stock, things have been fairly even, and those early stocks aren't exactly Leo's calling card. Leo won just under 55% of the openings across the two games, and dealt just under 55% of the total damage between the two players. Neither player was regularly able to find openings in the opponent's disadvantage. Both players were doing nearly identical damage when they got the hit, 15.79% for Leo and 15.71% for Spargo. An extra 0.08% is hardly the kind of edge that guarantees a set win. So all Spargo has to do here, sitting down 0-2 against the best player in the world, is take a deep breath and tell himself to stick to the game plan. Simple. On to Game 3. The set continues to be characterized by back-and-forth neutral interactions, with only rare hits converting into any sort of follow-up. Cloud and Byleth both typically need to land their hits closer to the hilts of their weapons to find their best combos, and the spacing was simply too immaculate from both sides to create the big openings we're used to seeing from these characters. Leo brought Spargo down to his last stock first and looked poised to advance to Grand Finals. But finally, with Spargo sitting at 76%, he finds the biggest opening of the set yet. It takes a lot to shake these guys. Spargo trying to fire back. Okay, 
Cuts that lead in half Hold real up. quick. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. You already knew. You already knew what he was going for. This is, as far as cloud things go, not all that complex. Landing aerials like back air into dash attack had been bread and butter for Spargo all set and all tournament long. But finally, after three games of nearly perfect disadvantage from Leo, a crack in the armor appears. Leo tries to swing out of disadvantage to land in the corner rather than grab ledge, and Spargo catches it with a fair. The 39% of damage from this opening was the most Spargo had done off of one hit all set. The first time he had eclipsed 30% off any single opening, and the first time he had managed to catch a landing like this after opening Leo up. And it couldn't have come at a better time, as that damage forced Leo to play much safer as he searched for what could have been the final stock of the set. Spargo and Leo would find themselves tied at 114 before a mad scramble for the game. At one point, Leo had Spargo dead to rights. With advantage on the ledge, Leo successfully baited a jump off ledge with a retreating fair, but buffered a forward tilt in the wrong direction on landing. A forward tilt that certainly would have taken the set if it connected. But Spargo was able to beat Leo's ledge traps, and eventually the speed and multiple kill threats of Limit Cloud proved too much for Leo after Spargo caught a preemptive ledge jump fair with an up air to close the game. Spargo took that momentum and ran with it, winning the first six openings of Game 4 before taking an early stock lead, his first stock lead since a brief four opening stretch of Game 1. Leo would even up the stock count, but had a hard time making his openings count on Spargo's second stock. Remember the fair Spargo punished on landing to start everything in Game 3? Spargo kept finding holes in Leo's disadvantage as Game 4 progressed, and Spargo's lead grew. Sitting at 73% on his last stock, Leo still had the potential to pull a comeback if he could take Spargo's second stock soon. Instead... Either way, he's looking good to take this game max. Forward air, get off of me. He's just raising the roof again. Back to back, up airs, back air too. The positioning by Spargo is insane right now, Max. The fair up air combo is problematic enough for Leo, now nearly lapped in damage as a result of Spargo's aggressive landing, but in an effort to find the reversal he needs to swing this game, Leo gets punished yet again, setting up the kind of juggle Cloud mains live for. Pushed to the corner, Leo again tries to claim the stage rather than grab the ledge, and Spargo takes his stock for it. Across the first three games, Spargo was only able to find extensions on four of his openings. Leo's precise spacing and smart decision-making in disadvantage made it nearly impossible to follow up and the threat of byless reversals like Nair to Dash Attack understandably made him hesitant to pull the trigger. In Game 4 alone, though, Spargo extended 6 of his openings, increasing his average damage per opening from 15.7 to 20.3, a 1.3 times bump. Everything we know about momentum tells us that Spargo should roll through this Game 5. Everything we know about MKLeo tells us that this is still his set to lose. Prior to this set, MKLeo had been brought to Game 5 48 times in our database at major events. The fact that these sets went to Game 5 at all implies at least some degree of evenness to these matchups. You wouldn't know it from the Game 5 results. Leo was 36 and 12 heading into Game 5 against Spargo, a 75% win rate. Something had to give. Leo did an excellent job of squelching the momentum to open Game 5. Leo picked up the first hit and first KO and didn't allow an opening of more than 15% to Spargo through the first stock. But Spargo finally started finding ways to extend his advantage. He took the first stock through an extended edge guard that ended with a limit up B to catch a neutral getup. The true turn turning point though would come on Leo's second stock. This runoff nair from Leo easily could have sealed Spargo's second stock and put Leo on the path to Grands. Instead, stock or both of the stocks could have been dropped. Leo making his way back though, gotta get around these back airs. Oh my oh, god, the frame no. trap from Spargo, is he about to do this? Spargo finally exhausted Leo and Byless options and disadvantage, and most impressively, he was able to latch on when Leo picked new options out of nowhere, like the attempt to air dodge through. The next minute would show why Game 5 Leo is such a force. With his back against the wall, Leo won 10 of the next 12 openings, finding the KO despite Spargo's slipperiness and swiftly chipping away at his last stock. With the momentum and the history now both on his side, we can all understand why the whole venue, Leo included, was ready to believe the game was over when this connected. Oh, Till, oh, oh my god, the upbeat. Oh, are no you way, dead? No way. Are you dead? Leo kind of, he, he reeled back a little Charge. bit. For all the momentum Leo had, there was still one reason for Spargo to believe. Leo was still shaky and disadvantage. Of the two openings Spargo managed to find while Leo was rampaging his way back into the game, one was absolutely massive. This near carbon copy of the opening that got everything started back in game three. Cross slash, down tilt, looking for the up air, air dodging through though, Spargo with the knowledge, man. Uh-oh, MK Leo starting to reach just a oh, little no. bit. Oh, again, no! Again, again, again. All that said, Leo was still in a fine position, with the slightest of percent leads and needing just one good string. A nair into dash attack near the ledge, or a down tilt into up air, or just one good conversion off a ledge trap to end the comeback and put himself into grand finals. He found precisely the opening he needed. 
subtle drip from Spargo over by the ledge kept him alive oh! as well. Rolls in. Leo found his nair, but Spargo was able to save himself twice. First by hitting the tech, and second by rolling away from Leo's down tilt, perfectly timed to hit neutral tech. And it's possible that this nair, seconds later, either could have hit Spargo frames earlier to avoid a trade, or could have sent Spargo off stage instead of back to center. Both scenarios that could have made MK Leo a winner. Instead, Spargo took that last opening as far as he could. Leo had one slight chance. During his ledge trap, Spargo lands before his forward air can come out, giving Leo the opening he needed to roll or possibly even swing through. But that's an impossible split second decision to make, and as Leo tried to jump out of the corner, Spargo was able to snipe it with Cloud's signature back air, sealing the comeback and putting Spargo on the path to his first open major win. Part of the answer to how Spargo made his comeback, as the answer will be for any great performance against a legendary opponent like Leo, was luck. Just a couple of inputs, like the wrong way forward tilt in Game 3 and the late game tech in Game 5, could have entirely swung the set in the other direction. But Spargo's resilience in this set was incredible. Despite the fact that Leo's disadvantage state was ironclad for about three and a half games, Spargo did not deviate from his game plan. He didn't let a devastating early stock in Game 2 get to him, nor did he let the weight of history or the ever-growing list of MKLeo's accomplishments worm their way into his head. Game 4 saw Spargo increase his average damage per opening from 15 Point seven to 20.3. In Game 5, Spargo was able to push even further, pumping his average damage per opening up to 23.1%, a 1.5 times increase over his output from the first three games of the set, all as Leo's damage output held stagnant. That's a more powerful increase than Steve going from wood to diamond. The fact that Spargo was able to slowly but surely find his openings and truly make them count as the set went on was the real reason he was able to make this comeback. As 2022 continues, MK Leo versus Spargo will be the marquee matchup at any any tournament they both enter. Summit was a big win for Spargo, but the collision win was on another level, as he not only showed he has the skill to make every set against Leo a battle, but he also has the resilience to take Leo down from a losing position. Very, very few players have ever shown even one of those qualities, much less both. For Spargo, already there at such a young age, the sky is the limit. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, please check out pgstats.com and follow us for more information. This has been Turned Down for Walt. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Next time.